Aren't we done? Hey, welcome back to Freedom Hillbilly. This is our third, fourth, I kind of lost count, but we're doing another one on frame of reference because sometimes you can't tie into property bounds for whatever reason. Or you found the ideal location that you can take all your points 360 degrees to do your entire mapping for your project in one morning. But you can't bring in the property bound line of sight. So if that's the case, you're going to need to set up a frame of reference using some monument that's permanent. The Artesian Well, the absolute best permanent monument that you will find. It's heavy duty steel tubing that's just been pounded into the ground, into the solid bedrock. It isn't going anywhere, ever. So, when you find one of these, you're golden. Now, there's a couple of things you need to do to prep it to make it the perfect ne plus ultra, which is French for saying the perfect monument. And that is, that's right, a drill with an eighth inch drill bit. And what we're going to do is just put a little divot in the top of this so that we could put a point of our rod right in there. Well, you first find the center close to the center, mark it, then and that's it. It's as easy as that. Now you have the perfect benchmark. You can even go further, get a metal stamping kit or even one of those little battery powered Dremel engravers and mark zero station or ZS or give it an elevation reference even better put 1000 on it that's your elevation reference so there we have it it's as easy as that we have our zero station and all we have to do now is get a bearing back to our reference station then we can put our prism rod on this sucker and establish that reference station so let's get to it In order to get an accurate bearing, you want to use the best compass you can get a hold of. Like this. Actually, this is the inclinometer. I've misplaced my compass. So, I'm using the smartphone. But whatever you do, don't rely on a smartphone to get a bearing. I've tried three different smartphones, three different apps, and I got nine different answers. And some of them are off by at least a quadrant. So I'm just setting this up to show you how to do it. Get yourself a good compass and don't lose it. Well, this plumb bob is way too heavy. It'll just topple this, but that's all I got. So let's see how we did. Yeah. But damn, that's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and use that. And we sight down the edge of the uh, smartphone here back to our reference station. I'm gonna sight along the edge here, line up the edge and uh, you know, it's in line with that reference station. And we end up getting 261.5 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and Write that down in our field book. And don't forget to measure how far your well is protruding from the ground. Okay, what do we got? 1.56. 1.56. Good. Let's head back to the reference station. So now that we have our reference station set up and we have the prism over the origin of our coordinate system, we're ready to just measure this distance, and that's easy. There's no special program. We could do it right from P0, uh, our local mode. So let's just aim it at the prism, take the measurement, 
51.385. And that's the number we want to write down. So HD equals 51.385 feet. So now we go into our field office and do some calculations. I'm gonna do it on the big sheet so you can see it easier. So here's our well. That's our zero station with the north thing zero, east thing zero, elevation 1000. Here's the reference station. Now remember, this is north. This was east. This was west. <laughs> and that's south. And this bearing was 261.5 degrees. And this distance we just measured at 51.385 feet. So now we want to calculate northing and easting. So it's rather quite simple. It's just distance times cosine of the bearing, which we call the azimuth, and easting is the distance times the sine of that angle, or azimuth. So, call up our calculator, and we're gonna do cosine of 261.5 equals minus 0.147 times our distance, 51.385 equals minus 7.59. Oh, so let's say six, oh, we round it off. I'll just write minus 7.595186 dot dot dot. Just minus 7.8, minus 7.60 feet. Okay, let's go sine of 261.5 equals, and multiply it by the distance, 51.385 equals minus 50.82 feet. So we've just calculated the, the northing and the easting. We're going to leave the elevation uh, out of it for now. We just got to remember that the top of the well is at 1.56 feet. And if we're going to use the elevation reference of 1,000 feet at ground level, we got to compensate for the top of the well if we put the prism at the top of the well. So now that we have our coordinates for the reference station on paper, we need to get it into the total robotic station. So it knows where it's at and it can do all the other stuff we need it to do. Program 43. Enter coordinates. Hit one for internal memory, and we give it an area file name, so alpha T R S. Enter. Height measure? No. Point number? This is R S shift to. It's a reference station, so S T N. Enter the northing. Let me just read it. Minus. So here's the minus sign. 7.60 feet. Easting. Minus 50.82 feet. Store it. Yes. And that's as many points as we need. So we're just going to hit enter. And it pops us back out to P0, local mode. All right, so now we have the zero station and the reference station to in our area file, TRS. So now we're ready to establish our station over reference station number two. And since we're over reference station number two, and that's already in the file, we will be doing a known station establishment. So let's get started. Program 20. Station established. It's a known station this time. Number one, enter. Oops. And the job file is TRS. We accept the defaults. It's prompting us for an occupied station name. It's already RS2, so we'll accept that default. 
The area file it's prompting us for is TRS. And it's prompting us for memory, number one, internal, station OK, yes. Height measure, yes. Back sight is zero station. And the target height is not 1,001.56. It's the prism height, which is five feet, plus the how much the well is exposed, which is 1.56. So we add five to 1.56 to get 6.56. Enter. And we're gonna go into the area file TRS. And is the reference okay? North zero, east zero, elevation 1000, yes. We're gonna aim at that reference object and hit aim. And we have a HA ref of 8129.41. And we're gonna registrate that. And it pops out to program zero. move this so there we have it the station is established and we're ready to go on with the rest of our survey pretty straightforward somewhat easier than when we're trying to tie in to existing property bounds or existing benchmarks so to recap we set our coordinate system origin at the well location and that's a permanent benchmark that isn't ever going to move so it's going to be easy to re-establish then we had to calculate where we set our reference station. And we do that by taking a compass bearing from the origin to the reference station position and using the total station, measuring that distance, and then using some math, we calculate where on the coordinate system this reference station is. So once we have those two coordinates, we need to enter them into a file in the total station so that it can be used for the rest of our operations. We did that using program 43, enter coordinates, and we're ready to go ahead and use program 20 to establish our station at that known point. So then we could go and use program 30 to collect data points for our survey or to use any other program that requires us knowing where we're at. So in some ways, the mechanics of setting up your coordinate system from scratch by establishing a permanent benchmark and a reference station and calculating where that is, the mechanics of that are easier than if you had to tie into existing property bounds and existing points from an unknown spot. There's just fewer steps. However, the trade-off is you gotta be doing some math in the field, double check your work, Eventually you'll get comfortable with it. So that's a wrap. Again, thanks for following along. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. He'll bill you out.